Hello, educators. Welcome to the Writers' Workshop, and welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Dr. Sarah Donovan. I am a former uh, English language arts teacher of 20 years and currently a teacher educator for the last decade. I come to you today to share um, resources and experiences from my time teaching writers in the hopes that it will help you infuse more choice and voice into your classroom. I understand many teachers have not had an official teaching writing course. And I also understand that the way our teacher shortage is going right now, we have a lot of emergency certified teachers who really need some additional resources uh, to support the writers. We're all just trying to do the best we can for our students. So I'm gonna talk to you today about revising with peers. <laughs> So the traditional exchanging of papers when it comes time to do peer revision uh, doesn't seem to work very well for most classrooms. And part of it is because uh, we frame that, or I have in my early years of teaching, of saying like trade papers and really just kind of checking things off or looking for obvious errors. And that's typically when we're at the point where we're about ready to turn a paper in. We wanna make sure it has everything that the teacher told us it should have. Uh, I'm really thinking about this in a way that helps students become better writers, that helps them understand that someone is going to be reading their work and they want to make sure that their ideas are clear and that they make sense and that they're engaging. And the best thing that we can do for writers is offer them a mirror. So Peter Elbow is this great um, teacher educator or writing educator who talks about what writers need more than anything is a movie in the mind of a reader. And once we know how the our ideas live for a reader, then we can decide if we wanna change things or improve things or keep things the same, depending on how it impacts the reader. So this revising with peers is a great routine to do after students have a good draft going and maybe think that they're finished, but they haven't had an idea. Or early on, they have like a good start and they're not quite sure where to go next and they could benefit from having someone listen to their paper. I should say the other important thing about what the protocol I'm gonna share is that you students do not change papers. <laughs> uh, the writer owns the paper. No one is going to write on it. No one's going to correct grammar or fix things. It is purely about ideas. So there's no changing of papers. If the writers read their story, then they will catch any, any issues with flow or stumbling or typos if the writer is the one reading it aloud so they can hear the flow and hear how it sounds. So in the experience of doing this revising with peers, the writer benefits so much from the idea of having an audience, from reading their paper aloud, and from just trying it out. And then the peer who's listening also gets some ideas for their own work and then they trade. So I'm gonna take you through this process. So this comes from uh, Peter Elbow, also my friend and writer, Jennifer Jacobson with all these different ideas. So here we go. All right, so first, if you have students coming to you saying, I don't like writing or I'm not a good writer, um, it's important to honor that students come with a history of writing in other classes in other years that may not have been positive. So maybe they were told that they're not a good writer and that might mean about grammar or I'm a bad writer because they can't spell. Uh, all of the messages from their earlier years are floating around in their mind and in their body. So it's really important to think about and remember that students come to our class with these emotions, right? So I'm gonna circle back to um, this idea of emotions and cognitive experiences. So it's a little teacherly right here, friends. But because writing is as much an emotional as cognitive activity, affective components, the emotion, strongly influence all phases of the writing process. So if you have a student that took something from their heart map and wrote a poem or wrote a story, and then they're getting ready to share it with someone or turn it in. That is bound up in emotion, but also any messages or whispers of doubt that they've ever heard in their past also comes in the phase of their writing. So they're carrying emotions and so affective and cognitive components. 
So this is the part that's really important for you as teachers to make sure that you're nurturing in your classroom because how you do assessment and feedback, whether it's peer to peer or teacher to um, student impacts how your students feel about and do writing. If they have high anxiety, if it feels high stakes and scary and intense, that's gonna impact their writing. But if it's conversational, it's processed, it's supported, it's fun, it's community-based, that's gonna impact their writing too. So setting it up so that the students are talking about their writing as writers, not as good or bad, but as how the writing lives in the world, it's gonna change the dynamic and the tone of your classroom. So our purpose as teachers of writers is to teach the writer. How do writers talk about writing? We've been doing a lot of this in the videos, right? This is easy, this is hard, my idea feels this way. This is what I wanna write about. This is how I wanna write about it. This is the mode, this is the genre, this is my draft, this is my revision. All of that language is really important, right? Here's what I liked about your craft. This is what I thought was beautiful about your writing. We wanna have our classroom talking like writers, right? We wanna have them talking to each other like writers. And we wanna have them talking about the values and tensions of writing. This moved my heart, this resonated with me. This was really beautiful. This made me uncomfortable. All of that is really important. And the students do this when they do the peer conference. So circling back to Peter Elbow that I started with, to improve your writing, you don't need advice about what changes to make. You don't need theories about what is good and bad writing. You need movies of people's minds while they read your words. So we wanna to talk to our students and as teachers, we wanna do this too. If a student reads their paper to you, tell them how it moved your heart and mind, how it made you feel, what you understood, right? Point to the beautiful lines. They don't need necessarily things to change or things to make correct it or to make it better or different or whatever rubric. They need to know how it lives with you. And so this protocol is gonna help us get at that. So I would say as much as this is for peer conference, it's also for teachers. So mirror, point, wonder. Three parts, mirror, point, wonder. Teachers, anytime a student reads to you, mirror, point, wonder. Partners, peer partners, anytime you read to each other, mirror, point, wonder. Pretty simple, here we go. Mirror. Mirror means, I'm gonna move my face out of the corner here. Okay, mirroring means that you're allowing the writer to hear how their work is being understood. So you wanna expand your reflection, add events or details that aren't present in the writing. So many times students will, once I say, this is how it lives for me, this is how it made me feel. The students will then add or change or revise. If peers are doing this too, oh, when I heard your story, this is what I was thinking about. Then students will say, yeah, that's what I was going for or I want something else, right? So many times the student's gonna expand upon the reflection that you give them. They might add events or details that are not present in the writing. And in this case, you wanna guide the reader back to, to their work and include any of those additions or changes, right? Mirror. So here's an example, a student reads their essay to me, right? Or story to me, or they do this to each other. Oh, you've written a vulnerable story about a time when you realize something about being a sister. You try to enjoy your present, but obstacles keep reminding you of what birthdays should really signify. This is what I heard from your story. So that's mirror. What did you hear that they wrote? Why did, why did it seem to be important to the writer? This is mirroring back, okay? Point. Step one, mirror. Step two, point. So always point to content. We don't want to point to errors or correct or wrong, but always point to content or skill and how it makes meaning or impacts understanding. We're not focusing on mechanics or correct usage. So point to something that the student did or say or, or wrote. Um, as far as the story or the informational essay or the poem and how it helped you 
understand something. So here's an example. Um, you didn't just say it was wrapped. You said three inch by 12 inch box wrapped in leftover Christmas paper and a card taped to the top rested inside an empty cereal bowl. These are details that made me feel if I'm really inside your story, seeing the same things that your character is seeing. Okay. So uh, this response is very specific. It showed you I was listening to your story. It showed there's something really special about that piece of that piece that I'm pointing to, right? It's descriptive. It makes me feel that I'm right in there, right? So that's pointing. So mirror, you wrote a story about your birthday, but it was really about your sister. Point, uh, the way that you described the present was really descriptive and helped me understand your family and what was going on and like blah, blah, blah. Okay, you get it, right? So I heard your story. Let me mirror, point, mirror, point. Okay, next, wonder, mirror, point, wonder, three, wonder. So wondering helps the writer develop a necessary sense of audience, as in what does the reader need to make sense of things, be moved, think differently, depending on the author's purpose. So here's what I, my mirror, my point, and now here's what I'm wondering, depending on what your purpose is, you might wanna add, so revise, move around, clarify, blow up, explore, whatever. Um, so wondering, it's instead of questioning, it's wondering because maybe the author did it on purpose. Maybe the author is leaving something out on purpose to make you uncomfortable or make it seem mysterious. So that's why we're wondering. So mirror point wonder. So wondering might look like, oh, I am wondering why you didn't think everyone would hear the hairdryer once you turned it on. Was there something sneaky about you or were you being just oblivious? Was that just part of your personality? So again, I'm referring to the story that a student wrote, Mirror, it's about your birthday and it's about this present hairdryer, now that we know, um, point. It was wrapped in this Christmas paper box, which is kind of interesting and a card taped to it, right? Wondering when you were using your present in the hairdryer, you, it, you wrote about it like it was kind of sneaky, but maybe it was just part of your personnel. Like I'm wondering more about this, right? Other things you might wonder about is um, dialogue or thoughts and feelings or imagery or pacing or lots of different things you can wonder about. It just depends on what's happening as a listener, right? As an audience. So mirror point wonder, okay. I'm not sure if I have my video here, let me see. So here's an example of the peer. Right. So what I was just explaining was sort of how I, as a teacher, might do the mirror point wonder. Um, but this is something that we, mo again, model for your students. So you might have you and a student practice in front of the whole class. Um, I also have a script that I give them so they sort of know how to proceed. And then they practice. Again, they record, too. So that way um, there's evidence of their speaking and listening and peer review with one another. Uh, over time, students keep these videos of their uh, peer review, which is part of standard two revision, uh, and they show how they're getting better at being at doing peer revision and the revision process. So there's lots of different things happening when you have students record because it can document their growth over time. And students get much better at this once they're given the choice, the power, the agency to be a listener for their classmate. classmate and they start to see each other as writers and they're helping each other become better writers, yeah? Okay, so here's an example of the mirror point wonder. You'll hear at the beginning that there's a little kind of introduction piece where they kind of check in and like, what did you write and what do you need from me? And this gives agency to the writer, right? The writer owns the conference. They share their work, they ask for what they need, and then the peer is there for support. So let's see how this sounds. This works too. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. and then you can ask a question. Mm -hmm. All right. 
So, what is the form of this piece? Can I already start? Yeah. It's fine. Okay. Um, what is the form of this piece? This is a poem. And what made you choose this piece to revise? Um, so I be, like I started this for the 30 poem for 30 days thing, and I thought like I really liked my beginning part, and then, um, I'm pretty sure you actually commented on this poem. Oh. And then I, um, I kind of was going to add on it because it's based on the Cinderella story, so uh-huh. I kind of wanted to like give like the entire story in like a poem form. So yeah. Is there some part in? Uh, is there some part that you particularly like help with? Um, so I say night like three thousand times. Um, I have night, night, um, night, night. <laughs> like I have night thousand times. So I'm not really sure like what I should do about that. Okay. Well, how about you read it, and then we'll see. All right. Oh, how lucky I am today. Fairy godmother appearing out of thin air, making all of my wishes come true with a swish of a wand. Making a carriage out of a simple orange cord, making my friendly field mice into white stallions. My mice are so kind to help me so, almost bursting to gallop into the dreamy night. Making the rags of my torn-up and dirty dress into a beautiful gown, a gown like the mid-morning sky. Droplets of periwinkle adorning the clouds of cloth, covering my trembling le- legs. Specks of light bleh, <laughs> specks of light sparkling the blue sky of my dress. Today is the night. Today is the night I will change forever. There is hope for me yet. While I await for my prince, days in excitement, almost sitting on fear. Fear if all of this is not true. Everything is so different from my past, my horrible life pushed away from the paradise of today. Just today. There is hope for me yet. As my dear field mice, now stallions flying into the starry night, I know this is a night I will never forget. My smile will never leave, not even trying to be forced. I spot the palace, my heart beating faster than ever, fast like a driver pushing its horse to go faster, faster, and faster, until the entire world is just the blur. I know the prince is there. Will he see me? I walk up the steps as I hear my glass slippers clattering. I know in my heart that getting picked won't matter. The fun awaits, but when the clock strikes midnight, I will go. Luck, you are here with me. Stay with me all tonight. We must stay bright, for there is hope for me yet. Oh, that was really nice. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I think your poem is about, you know, Cinderella, which is what you said at the beginning. Yep. And it kind of seems like... Okay, so just pausing it for a moment. This is the mirror, right? She's... This is what it seems to be about Cinderella, but it's also about something else. So let's hear what she says. Uh, like a bigger theme might not just be Cinderella, but how there's so many people that helped Cinderella along the way. So kind of like friendship. But I know you said a lot about how there was being a lot of like the word night a lot. So maybe you could say instead of night, there's a lot of stars in the night. So you could say the starry sky instead of night. And oh, that would yeah. work too. Okay. Because I remember somewhere you put the starry night right before night. So you could say the starry sky, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So here um, she's kind of pointing and suggesting at the same time because the writer asked for something specific, right? Specific. So the the peers saying, this is what I heard you wanted, you, you needed. Here's what I saw that you were doing. And here's my suggestion. And notice right in this moment, the revision is happening. The revision is happening as they're talking about it. The revision is happening in this, you know, four, four or five minutes of just sharing. And the, the document is open and the writer is making the changes, not the peer, but the writer is the one making the changes. Or I know that in books they say like the starry blanket over our world or something like that. Okay. So what about like the into mm, Yeah, the starry night. Should I like do the night right after that? Sure. Ah oh, man, it's here. Mm-hmm. 
All right, so here's that peer conference protocol. Um, you see and heard in the video, the peer begins by asking questions. So it centers the writer as the authority of the paper. Um, then the writer reads aloud, the peer listens. And then after the read aloud, the peer says mirror point wonder, right? So it's just that this is a paper that I would give to the students and they practice and then they switch. Uh, as you can see, we also record them. So we have evidence of those. So I hope that this uh, tutorial has been really helpful in you thinking about another way you can uh, imagine the peer conference. Uh, this is something that you could have all partners doing in your class. They could go to different corners and then you might have like a small group that you could work with or you could have two or three students and, and sit with a small group while everyone else is working on their peer uh, protocol. Also, you might have some students who are finished or ready for a peer review or peer conference um, sooner than others or at different times. So you can always have a couple students just go into the corner of your class and go through the peer protocol and they should record it so that you can take a look, but also so they have evidence of their growth and using the peer process. So I hope this has been really useful. Please tell me how it goes in your classroom and please keep writing.